Hello, everyone. So today <clears throat> I'm going to speak about a very, very interesting and very sort of topic about spiritual possession and the origin of spiritual possession, the actual uh, anatomy of spiritual possession, which has been known to see the masters Taoist masters, rare tantra masters. And it's very important to understand how this works because people speak about it. There are certain books written about it, but how does spiritual possession happen? And what is the way, what is it as a, you know, spiritual phenomenon? So, the same applies to the origins, spiritual origins of disease, imbalances, etc., etc. So to begin with, we have to understand that that's why spiritual masters always emphasize the preparational or preparatory stage for before one starts breaking through the uh, time and dimensional boundaries on the path of to, to ascension or spiritual evolution, liberation, whichever way you call it. So, and the preparation always included um, different kinds of practices which targeted the body, the energy body and the physical body. The goal was to purify one's physical body as well as to create a spiritual shield, impenetrable spiritual shield for any type of pathogenic or negative energy. And so when we look at spiritual possession, we think that it is the mind or the consciousness is possessed. And it is the case, it's on some level, our energy substance is targeted. Energy substance is the conscious substance, is the essence of consciousness, which is energy, in other words, or the power that someone else wants or uh, tries to take through the spiritual possession. What is the goal of spiritual possession? There can be different goals. If, well, usually it's an energy theft or it's a desire to have access to someone's uh, energy system, conscious system, uh, bodily system. And of course, through the down cycle, these arts, the art of knowing spiritual body, energy body, the body in general, the physical body, they've somewhat been forgotten or the understanding of these science has declined. Even those practitioners who may impose some kind of um, spiritual disease or may uh, stand behind the spiritual possession might not know the actual process. They might know the, you know, the ritual or something that has been passed on to them, but they don't know the actual, what is going on and how this actually possible. But there are some masters who know this. And so in Taoism, for example, in, in Siddha tradition, it is known as a parasitic energy. Or in other words, in if you use Chinese language, it's known as gu, gu, or um, uh, some sort of a, a portal, an opening. And in Muslim world, it will be known as Zihir or Kala Jadu in, in Hindi or in India and in other parts of the world. It is some sort of a portal, an entrance, but how does this portal, or how do we create this portal? Or how is the portal created uh, by these people who target someone? The portal is created through some form of physical parasitic energy. And so there are natural forms of parasitic energy, which are called parasites. So 
let's say we ingest something that contains parasites. And so when the, there is, when, when such energy is present in our body, it is very easy to then spiritually, mentally, emotionally possess that being who contains parasites. And this is like the majority of human population at this point. Everyone contains or holds in their bodies, in their blood, some form of parasitic energy, parasitic pathogenic particles. The other way is pathogens from the environment, some kind of harmful substances. Again, these are all particles that attract the possession. No one can easily possess anyone unless they have that entrance or bridge or portal. And so usually when people misuse spiritual knowledge and want to harm someone, they aim at creating these portals. It is not about their mastery or about their rituals. It's about the way they try to create a link between the physical and the energy body of the victims and the victims are the people they intend to suck the energy or connect to some other energy clusters within the collective, usually negative energy, to feed those clusters with that energy in order to gain something in exchange for that energy. So to gain something in the material world. Uh, the majority of people in this world uh, practice this sort of spirituality. It is the spirituality of energy exchange, energy theft, energy harnessing, uh, basically because the majority of people are disconnected from the source. So they are not connected to that inexhaustible source of spiritual energy. And so they are codependent on other beings that carry that spiritual essence, soul, conscious energy, whichever way you call it. And so they apply these dark arts to control, to suck energy, to harness energy, to uh, for their own benefit. Sometimes people want to harm others out of competition deliberately. So in any way, in any case, um, when we see a disease, spiritually speaking, it's always the loss of energy. But a doctor, a true spiritual doctor, has to identify the source of the loss of energy. Whether this source is, let's say, because of toxins in the food, the, the toxins in the diet, and or because of the presence of parasitic energy. And as I already said, this energy is in different forms. It's either imposed parasitic energy or something that, let's say it's a poison. Someone has been poisoned in that magical spiritual way. They ingested something or through some type of rituals, some kind of pathogen was delivered into their body. And we're not discussing in this video the arts, the dark arts, because that's not the point. The point of this video is to raise awareness of how people get spiritually possessed. If they ingested something that contained parasites like worms or other type of parasites like fungi, like candida, like mold, or they inhaled that, let's say in case of mold, and it uh, polluted their blood or settled in their body parts uh, or somewhere else in their organs, intestines. So they will start losing energy. They will start losing nutrients. Their food will not be properly digested or assimilated. And so they will be depleted of physical energy as well as of spiritual energy. They will start having energetic imbalance that if not treated for a prolonged period of time will result in mental, emotional imbalances and even dysfunction or 
some sort of mental and emotional diseases. So the disease comes from the energy body because usually when we speak in terms of immunity, immunity in other words, in spiritual terms, is a powerful protective shield over the physical body. So the physical body remains in the shield from within and from without. So no one can just breach this immunity system just like that. But with time, as we grow up, or as we're children, we ingest some type of toxins, parasitic energy, which becomes a vessel. So one type of possession is when one carries that parasitic energy or entity like a worm, let's say, or fungi, and that is an entrance, an opening for negative energy possession from the collective. So in that case, it's not a deliberate possession by some magician, let's say a tantra master, negative, bad, uh, illiterate tantra master, let's say. So, or some kind of a bad person, evil person who tries to harness someone's energy. But if that soul is bright and they see that that soul has the body that is infested by parasitic energy, they may as well just connect to that parasitic energy or possess that person through the, that, the body of that worm or that uh, pathogen or that, you know, organism that becomes a bridge for that negative energy possession or it becomes a portal through which a magician can suck the energy or some other entities can suck the energy, harness that energy. These entities are not visible entities. These are within the collective consciousness. Sometimes these energies or these <clears throat> entities, an entity means there's some more collective clusters of negative energy are not even related to our dimension. But let's say when people ingest something uh, or they, um, you know, try some kind of substances, let's say plants or mixtures of suspicious nature with a desire to gain some power, spiritual power or something else. So they might unknowingly or just being fooled into that process, but still unknowingly, ignorantly, creates a portal to some other dimensional entities or clusters of consciousness of negative nature. Negative means they are of a limited spectrum of consciousness and energy, so they need other living conscious beings to get energy from. So they harness this way. And again, as I posted the video about plants, alchemy, kaya kalpa, it's very important to understand that every plant is like a portal. It connects us to the natural world, the collective consciousness, or some spectrum of consciousness within the collective, let's say. And so it's very, very important to understand that. And before we, you know, embark on some journey or spiritual pursuit, we have to become aware, first of all, of what we're dealing with. In yoga, in original yoga, which is very rare in this day and age, despite the fact that everyone is bending and twisting their bodies and spines, the real yoga was about freeing one's body, energy body and physical body of the parasitic energy first. Because you cannot understand spirituality. You don't have that foundation. You don't have that reference point. You don't have that level of spiritual purity and energetic purity to be protected on your spiritual journey. That's why you shouldn't even step on a spiritual journey before you understand this. And so a lot of emphasis in all the true, authentic, spiritual traditions are 
put on or focused on detoxifying one's physical body, intestines, blood, purifying blood, purifying energy channels so that these energy channels don't have these other channels or links or portals with the collective consciousness. It's also called genetic purification. So that would be the preparational stage, which might take up to 20, 30 years sometimes, maybe less. And this time is just approximate. Everyone is on their own spiritual evolutionary level, but nevertheless, the physical purification may take less time or lesser time, but the energetic purification may take longer. So when, when I speak about tens of year, years or this long period of time, I mean that it's an overall preparation stage. And so after that, one's mind is enough mature and pure, first of all, to understand and experience and contain, first of all, higher vibrations. Because when we speak in terms of spiritual knowledge, spiritual power, it's not words, it's not theories. It's the point is one is to become the vessel of that spiritual frequency, which is a powerful spiritual radiation. And this spiritual radiation has to be contained in that vessel. And that vessel has to be, to emanate that as well. That's the whole point of spiritual evolution and yoga. You're not just practicing something theoretically or reading books or twisting your body. You are supposed to become the vessel, the example of that which is higher frequency, embodiment, the, the embodiment of yoga, the embodiment of meditative state or being, tranquility, peace, divine love, whatever you call it. You are to be the embodiment so that you can be a living teaching or a living teacher, whatever you want to call yourself. So when we speak about this, we speak about parasitic energies, parasitic currents within the collective to which we are genetically connected to. So when we are connected to these energies, it means we have some kind of portals within our energetic, energetic body or through our bloodlines. It means our genetic material has gotten corrupt throughout the down cycle. And because of that corruption, it means it creates attachments, attachments within the collective consciousness through which, through which the negative energy leaks, or, uh, sorry, not negative energy, the energy leaks or the, and the negative energy can come into the body and suck that body out of um, the essence. That's why we have arrived to this phenomenon, so-called aging, decaying, short span of life and disease, because through the down cycle, we have created a lot of, a lot of attachments, links, portals to different, different, um, clusters of negative energy within the collective through which uh, our energy is harnessed. That's how we support the delusion of the uh, collective or the matrix, in other words, the negative clusters of the demonic uh, clusters, the negative energy clusters within the collective. And so when we speak in terms of spiritual evolution, it means we start this process of detangling or in other words, liberating. And those people who play spirituality, who speak, talk, but don't walk the talk, they don't know about that. They think that it's just enough to have a little peaceful state, meditative state. It's, a, it's a, an actual science and a process and a very tedious and painful process of detangling, of dissolving the corruption, the corrupt patterns, the corrupt currents, the corrupt attachments, First of all, you are to identify them. But before you start the subtle process of self-purification or the, the, the purification of your energy body, you have to free yourself of 
any parasitic energy in the physical form, on the physical dimension. So you have to disable the hosts or, dis, uh, you know, um, detox yourself, in other words. You have to free yourself from those parasitic hosts which exist in your uh, body, in your physical body, in your blood, in your cells, in your intestines, in your organs. And scientifically speaking, when we see parasitic energy being settled in certain organs, intestines, and that parasitic energy sucks our nutrients or even sometimes creates um, raptures in our physical organs, infests our physical organs and destroys it. That's why we have organ failures, we have uh, irritable bowel syndrome, we have different kinds of um, autoimmune diseases. And it's all because uh, these are all the signs of parasitic energy. You may, you may make a list of known uh, human diseases, but all of them fall under one and the same category. The presence of uh, pathogens, which are also toxins in the air, toxins in the water, toxins in the soil that then transfer into our food, toxic food, chemical uh, substances that create a, uh, a specific immunity response. That's where we have a lot of allergies, autoimmune uh, diseases and stuff like that. Also, there are other types of um, infections which are passed on through parasites like bugs, ticks, um, bites of certain insects, reptiles, animals, and so on and so forth. But nevertheless, it's always somehow the, the pathogens enter the body and they become the host of this energy, whether it is just because of the way you live, your lifestyle, your environment, your climate, which kind of enhances the possibility of getting infected or infested by parasites, or it is because you are a victim of someone's evil intentions in case of black magic, when someone ingests some particle which becomes or creates a bridge between that uh, magician or entity, negative entity with a specific purpose. And that ruins the person's life simply because the result is one and the same. It's loss of energy. In whichever case I mentioned, the goal is one and the same. The goal of parasitic energy is to suck, to harness pure energy, positive energy from someone else, from the host, from the collective consciousness, because negative energy or certain limited clusters of this energy are not able to sustain themselves. So they can sustain themselves because of other hosts or because of someone else. So it's called energy theft. A lot of spiritual people nowadays are energy thieves. They're not masters, they're energy thieves. They're wannabes, spiritual wannabes. But they challenge sometimes spiritually awakened, let's say, beings. But awakened beings doesn't mean that they're masters. So they don't know how to protect themselves. Maybe they have reconnected to the higher being, but now they could be easily lured by these people into some kind of a limited spiritual paradigm or belief system or a cult where their energy will be sucked. They will be harnessing their energy for their own benefit for the material exchange, et cetera, et cetera. That's why I once again repeat that we're living in the demonic age and demonic meaning because 
We're living in the age where everyone is an energy vampire unless they are spiritually awakened, evolved, reconnected with the higher being and autonomous in the spiritual sense. And to gain that autonomy, they have to go through a, a tedious and um, very long purifying process, spiritual refinement, self-cultivation, where they wouldn't need anyone else's energy. So they free themselves from this uh, vampiric, you may say, um, matrix or whatever dimension system. So they become self-sufficient, but definitely they will be targeted by other beings who are not capable of generating their own energy or, and again, it's not own energy, it's when you are connected to the higher frequency, higher reality, higher being with much more energy. From our human perspective, it's an inexhaustible energy. So, and when you evolve that way, you don't need anything anymore from the projected reality. But the projected reality itself depends on each and every element within it. That's why it's so difficult, or it seems to be difficult, to free yourself from that projected reality. Because it keeps on, you know, luring you, hailing back, come back, come back, you know, calling you back, kind of. And this call is from within, because you are internally still connected. And so it is very difficult to control anything. You have to become, you have to realize how it works, the process through yourself. Then you become a Tantra master. Tantra means you hold that knowledge. You mastered the movements of consciousness, the, the waves, the creation within yourself at least, so that you can understand how parasitic energy possesses it possesses you, your mind, your essence. It harnesses your essence, but through the body, through something that is in the body. And those who have spiritual eyes, they can see the, 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 the source of that. What is the source of that possession? Is it something that you've ingested from the outside? Is it just food that feeds your parasites? which is also the case. And of course, your intentions, your cravings, your addictions are all dictated by the presence of parasitic energy. And again, it's not just one way. It's, it's, it's double-edged sword, you may say. It, it may be from ingested physically or sometimes as the portals are created spiritually. Let's say you've ingested some plants, you can create also spiritual portals through use of psychedelic plants. Or you connect to some people and if they host parasitic energy, by being connected to them, by let's say establishing a friendship, a love relationship, love connection, especially sexual connection, intimate connection, you create a portal, a bridge between you and them. And if your body or energy system is pure, theirs is not, that energy will have access to your system through the, the your intimate connection with these people or through your emotional or mental or even spiritual connection with these people. That's why you have to be very wise in this world. You have to understand the nature of this world. You have to understand the nature of this day and age. No, not so many people speak about it. People speak about raising your frequency. When there is a parasitic host, it's very difficult to raise your frequency. Even if you eat good food, from time to time you'll be craving, you'll still be feeding that energy. That's why masters, real masters, created certain systems, certain ways how they 
purified their bodies, rejuvenated. The, the point was not to, oh, I just want to look beautiful and young. It was clear understanding or based on the clear understanding of the fact that aging is a disease. It's a loss of energy, nothing else. And so in order to stop aging, you need to have strong spiritual protective shield, which on the physical level is called immunity shield or immunity protection. And you cannot have strong immunity if you are a host to a parasitic energy, where the fungi, where the, you know, uh, worms or any other pathogens, because they will, as I repeat again and again, they will be the host to parasitic energy or the bridge. When we speak in terms of sexually transmitted diseases or sexually transmitted infections, again, they're very closely related to our emotional attachments, emotional traumas, which we create through intimate connection with people. Or when you go and copulate with multiple partners, you create multi multiple links with their ancestry, with their bloodlines, with those genetic corrupt patterns. Eventually, your energy starts leaking through these ties. And you start, your the organs through which these links are established on the physical level, they will start suffering. They will start being depleted. They will start being inflamed. Normal medicine, which is socially accepted, talks about bacteria and viruses, but it is just a theory. The reality is it's always an opening pathogen. It's always a substance that creates a portal for that energy to leak out. And that creates, if one organ is connected to something like that and starts being depleted, other systems and organs which are related to it might be stagnating. Sometimes our energy drains through our emotions, actually most of the time, thoughts. The true human being, a healthy human being, does not have thoughts or emotions. They can use this apparatus of our existence, part of our intelligence, from time to time. But naturally, we're not supposed to have constant thoughts and emotions. when we exist with thoughts and emotions, it's because somehow we created an attachment, we empowered something outside of ourselves, inside of us, uh, sorry, outside of us. And this connection is very subtle. And so through this connection, because of constantly being obsessed about that aspect of reality, we create a portal through which our energy drains. If you look at the projected reality, everything is illusion. And if it's illusion, it means it's a portal to negative energy because it, this illusion cannot be sustained without your conscious participation. If you don't feed it, it somewhat doesn't exist. If you don't entertain it, you enjoy higher reality within the physical body. That's why we have to become aware to begin with. We have to understand the process of losing energy, gaining energy, how we decay and age, or in other ways, lose our energy. What are these portals, links, connections? And people say, I'm cutting the cord. Well, you can do this cut, cutting cord rituals or meditations 
You cannot fool, fool your consciousness. Your consciousness has to mature to this, to this point to kind of let go because you no longer make it important in your consciousness. It, it no longer matters. That's why you don't have thoughts anymore and emotions because it doesn't matter. Because your priority is your own spiritual being. Because you know, without your, the cultivation of your own spiritual being and the higher frequency within, your life is but the process of dying, decaying and dying. It's a painful death, basically. You think you're living, but you're painfully, slowly dying. And so the whole, whole point of Siddha teaching, whether it's Taoism or Sufism or yoga or whatever you call it, or you want to call it, it's one and the same system. The true system, the true science, spiritual science is one and the same. It's self-protection, self-preservation, energy preservation. When we are on this, on this dimension, in this realm. And the realization of the higher reality within the body. Because then this body shifts the mode. It changes in structure. It starts, you know, glowing instead of losing energy. What's the point of your spiritual practices if you cannot stop the process of aging if you cannot stop being sick, you have to gain mastery to the point, yes, you will need to fight battles with the parasitic energy. You will need to be strong. Your mind is controlled by that, your gut flora, the presence of those parasitic hosts. And you think that those thoughts are yours, those emotions are yours, those intentions are yours. No, the ego itself, is the presence of parasitic, or in other words, limited understanding of reality. And so without neutralizing that presence, without removing it from your body, without purifying spiritually your conscious being, detaching, dissolving those corrupt patterns which have been accumulated through your bloodlines, through the down cycle, Spirituality is impossible because it's not something out there. It's supposed to reflect on your body. People write me asking me, are these masters real deal? Are these? There are no masters here. It's a degraded age, the age of vampirism. They just care about getting by. Someone gets know, excited about getting famous, someone gets excited about getting paper, money, energy from someone. A lot of these masters are magicians and occultists, tantrics. Not tantra masters, tantrics, low, great, ignorant beings who think that they have to grab as much as they can in this one life. You can't, you know, Delude life. You can delude people. You can mesmerize them for a while. You can veil their perception. You can magic them. But sooner or later, the truth comes to the surface. A higher reality prevails. Whether we're in Kali Yuga or in the degraded age or in whichever age, the truth is always there. But the majority can't access it because of the presence of the parasitic energy, because of being the food to the parasitic energy within the collective, the parasitic negative clusters within the collective. So how do we want to ascend and to awaken and to get to some higher reality if at the root we rot? At the very root we want. Our consciousness is dispersed, is completely engrossed in the projection and feeds this projection. And without 
withdrawing this focus from the projected reality within into the essence. There is no progress, there is no ascension, there is no evolution. You can speak about so many things. You can pretend like you're very spiritual. Your body will be the result. We all can only attempt. We have to know where to aim. But at this point, it's difficult because we're so engrossed. So all we can do is just try, attempt at mastering, at purity, try to be pure, try to be pure to the degree we can, physically, emotionally, mentally. But to, to begin with, we have to identify and admit to ourselves our shortcomings, our connections with the parasitic energy within the collective and perceive the way this parasitic energy operates through our very body, through our very mind, through our own emotions and thoughts. Because we're not supposed to have them. They are the parasitic energy. They are the presence of parasitic energy. So how can you say you're a spiritually evolved being if you are, if you have thoughts or emotions? Continuously. Yes, we do have general emotions, love, anger. We're capable of, everyone is in this body, through this body. We can think if we need to calculate something or plan. But if it gets better of us, if this apparatus, if these tools of thoughts and emotions get better of us and continuously control our existence, then we are in possession of the matrix. I don't care what you practice spiritually. If that is your case, you're in possession. Most of the people think that it's normal to think of, how do you know these thoughts are yours? No thoughts or emotions are yours. The higher reality is free from these. It's a blissful awareness. That's it. There's no anything like that. That's why you're constantly relaxed, at peace, you're not draining yourself. If someone tries to drain you, whether it's your parasitic energy within, or it's some magician, or some entity, or some collective cluster, First of all, your attention will be taken out. Something will attract you outward. You will start having anxiety, restlessness from within. You will start having cravings. Even our addiction to food in that way as it is now is a sign of, of um, the presence of the parasitic energy. Evolved beings said this, said and wrote about the fact that the more you evolve, the less dependent you become on the projected reality. Mentally, emotionally, you're completely detached, naturally, and less and less dependent on the physical substance, sustenance. You're, you start being more dependent on higher forms of energy sustenance, which are sunlight, radiation, cosmic radiation, air, oxygen, pure water maybe, and very little food. Our codependence in the way it exists at this point is a sign that we are infested on the collective level. Each and every individual is infested with parasites, whether you know it or not, don't know it, whether it's symptomatic or asymptomatic. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope you gain clarity to some degree. If you have questions or would like to have a personal session, an insight with me concerning this or any other spiritual topic, you may book a one-on-one -on -one session. Thank you very much. And blessings to everyone. Stay healthy and stay balanced.